Now it's finally starting to feel like summertime and I am beginning to feel a little bit of the fever, the like summertime, maybe not the spring fever, but the summertime fever, which is exciting, but it does come with its own pitfalls. More on that in a minute. Hi everyone, today I am going to be recapping my no buy, my year long no buy for the month of May, 2023. Um, there's gonna be some changes coming to my channel th starting this week in terms of how often I upload. And so in the future, this video is also potentially gonna include like a whole financial thing, including my new journey, go in journey, my new <laughs> adventures with YNAB, a budgeting app, and um, maybe favorites, things like that. So stay tuned uh, for that. Leave me any suggestions in the comments for what you would like to know, financially speaking, about my life. I don't know how far I'll go, but we shall see. Move forward. I am doing a year-long no-buy in 2023 of three categories. Stationary planner stuff, beauty and skincare stuff, and DoorDash. Although this month I'm adding an additional challenge and we'll talk about that in a minute. If you are interested in the parameters, everything else, I will leave the playlist linked down below that has all my videos relating to this no-buy. You'll also notice, maybe if you watch my other videos, I'm not in my bedroom, I'm in my front room. If you hear the echo, it's because there's hard floors in here and a high ceiling, but Jesse is on a call in my bedroom where I've been filming and I really like it in here. So I'm hoping to sort of mix it up. We'll see. Let me know. I don't know what you're going to let me know about, but let me know about something. <laughs> Moving forward. Overall, May was better than it has been lately. Just in general, May has been better. There have been some ups and downs family-wise, like some just stuff. End of the school year is always very hectic. I think we're finally starting to ease into a routine with dialysis. I'm a home hemo patient, also, just in case you didn't know, which has caused all sorts of monkey wrenches in the year of 2023. <laughs> we went Sally Miz, we... Got a lot done. I finally think I've gotten to a rhythm of doing work on dialysis, which is really helpful. And I'll talk more about that later uh, this month when I do my work reset for Q3. But in general, life has been kind of kind of coming fast, not in a stressful way. I mean, it was stressful, but like just in a relentless way, you know, between the end of the school year and all the things we had planned in May and all the dialysis stuff. And Jesse's had work people in town, I think twice. And like just all sorts of things. And so I didn't really have too much of an opportunity to go try and shop. So that might have meant that this month's no buy went fairly well by virtue of it being filled with other stuff. So let's get into the categories, we'll talk about it. Uh, stationary, I've got my phone with my notes on in case you're wondering what I'm looking at. Uh, stationary, I bought nothing. Work budget, bought nothing. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about that, but didn't buy anything for work budget, didn't buy anything in terms of stationary stuff at all. So, That is not entirely true. I did buy something for work, but not out of the work budget. I just bought something I've said in my no buy that if I need to buy things that are directly related to like my art work, like my professional art, that that's not gonna count out of my work budget for the month, the, the, the no buy specific budget. I did buy one thing. I bought a pack of cheap, um, like acrylic synthetic brushes, brushes for acrylic paint that are like Filbert and uh, flat style, just one of those inexpensive, like $10 bag of a bunch of brushes, because I am working on my new Fuckery Flower series, which we'll talk more about in later videos, but I use those brushes to blend the colored pencil with mineral spirits. I've noticed that the greens and the blues, there's been a lot of greens and blues. They have really been staining my brushes. Even with washing them, it still kind of hangs on there because I'm doing so much blending. And so what winds up happening if I'm doing, say, a white flower, is that that pigment starts to transfer in and make it muddy, can't have that. So I just decided to buy some more because the ones I'm using really were not washing out and just have some like for each color family. So that's a lot of explanation to say I bought some cheap brushes and I only spent a dollar on them because I had a voucher from Michaels, which I don't know how, I haven't been spending any money at Michaels, but whatever, we'll take it. Part of this also might be because I haven't been touching my planners all that much. So I haven't felt the urge to buy planner shit because I have been ignoring my planners. I'm gonna do a video next week on my toxic planner habits. I'm gonna talk more about that there, but suffice it to say, maybe part of the reason I haven't been tempted by planners or stationary stuff is because I have been actively avoiding planners and stationary stuff in the month of May. So I don't know how healthy that is, but it worked. On the other hand, 
I'm gonna show you my empties because I did go through some shit. I think this was the most productive I have been thus far in a month during the no buy of getting through sticker sheets. I got a couple plan with me's on my channel about how I was, uh, that's weird. Oh, okay, never mind. It's not weird. For a second, I thought it was like one of those little plastic rings that you have when you like unscrew a soda bottle, but no, it's one of my empties. Okay, uh, I specifically, very specifically, did a couple of plan with me's this month and like set my weeks up, wanting to see how many sticker sheets I could get rid of. I think that is a challenge I should set for myself each month to really go through some of these stickers. My first, is it my first? Maybe my first. It is an empty roll of washi tape, which this is actually one I really like. It's like a soft pink patterned roll. I'm kind of sad it's gone, but I'm also glad it's gone because it shows I'm using my shit. That's exciting because going through washi tape is actually pretty fucking hard. That shit, like at the rate that I collect it, I am more likely for it to go bad and stop sticking or get overly sticky or start like being that thing where you can't pull it off the wheel because it like keeps like shredding that's more likely than actually using one up. So using a roll of washi tape up makes me feel pretty good about me. And the rest of these are all sticker sheets. It's from two different Fern Creek stickers mystery kits that I had already used once. These mystery kits, at least the ones I bought, come with enough date stickers and shit to use more than once with still having plenty of stuff. And so this will be the second time I used both of these kits. And I did have to condense a few stickers, but not many to get to these sheets. So we'll count them as I put them in my little garbage. But like I said, two different kits. So this is two weeks worth of stickers I went through. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So nine sheets of stickers. Pretty sure that's a record so far for this year. Feeling really good about my planner stationary lifestyle, especially since we're in launch season right now and I have not fallen down the launch rabbit hole except to roast things. <laughs> Beauty and skincare, my second category. Another category where I think I did really well in. Last month, I said I wasn't sure if the Olaplex, which I'm already really liking, I've only been using it for about a month now, twice a week, and I haven't used any, I got like a mask as a gift with purchase, I haven't used that yet, but I've been using the shampoo, the conditioner, and this like uh, stuff you put in, like a leave-in for if you're gonna be heat styling your hair. And it's working really well for me so far. A lot of you basically said that since I was buying a shampoo and conditioner, to replace the one that we had used up. And even though we still put another head and shoulders in there for Jesse, I decided to switch. It didn't make sense to say that I had missed my no buy. I, I, I fully agree with that. So thank you, general public. I will say though, I did buy one thing that I did not have one of, like it was a new category for me. Well, two things. And one of them I would like to tell you to never buy. I am at the point right now where I really wanna like start working on my feet. It sounds raunchy, but like I live in a very dry climate and I love to live in flip-flops in the summer and the result of that is some hippie ass feet. And so I decided I wanted to start maybe once a week really trying to work on like moisturizing my feet and, and dealing with the dead skin and everything else. So I bought a scrub from Soap and Glory and that's been working really well. And I'm not using it on the rest of my body for the most part. I don't mind using a scrub on my body. I don't want to scrub around my fistula. I've just mostly been using it on my feet. But then I also bought their foot mask, which is like a warming foot mask. And oh my God, I thought my feet were burning. Like it hurt. And so I went to wash it off because it was hurting so much. And it kept hurting. Do not like, 10 out of 10 do not recommend. Bad purchase. I thought a mask would do better than just some lotion, but I do have some, some lotion in my bin of things to use up. So I'm just gonna go with that. That's what I get for trying to do something new. I glanced at like Google and it said like four stars, but I didn't read any reviews. Well, it turns out there's a lot of negative reviews too. So my own bad. So let's go through the empties. I've got a few of them this month. We went through another bottle of Aveeno body wash. I'm holding it kind of delicately because it's all gross. I think I replaced it with like the green one. It's still a vino, it's just whatever the green one is because that's the one that they had when I was doing a pickup order at Target, but yeah. We go through that. I, it's the only body wash I have found that does not irritate my skin and make the dryness worse with the uh, dry weather here, especially in the winter here in Denver. So that has been my like only body wash. And the couple of times I've changed it out, I just haven't liked it as much. Speaking of an old favorite of mine, this has been my shaving cream slash butter, slash whatever you want. It's called a cream shave. Uh, this has been my favorite for literal decades now. 
ever since they started carrying at Trader Joe's. I will every once in a while try something else and then be reminded why I love this stuff the most. This is the Trader Joe's Cream Shave and it is... This is like honey mango scent. I don't fucking know, but it's just like a lotion. You don't need very much and it's only like four bucks. So um, it lasts a long time. It's cheaper. It doesn't clog up your drain. I just, and it makes my legs feel nice when I shave them. I always just replace this with the exact same thing and have been doing so except for a few occasions since probably like two, since I probably, since I was pregnant with Sunny. I think that's when they started carrying this. It's been years. Heat protection spray. This is the Way heat protection spray and I like it but it's expensive, so I wanted to try something a little cheaper. My sister recommended the Kristen S. She loves the scent of Kristen S products. I think it's a pretty scent, but it's not my huge favorite, but it still smells nice. I've been using that one. It's been working okay. Um, that's what I replaced this one with because I wanted to see if I could do something that wasn't, you know, 40 bucks or whatever the fuck this expensive bullshit is. Speaking of expensive bullshit, went through another deodorant, replaced it with the same deodorant. I'm not exact. I, once I find something that works, I stick with it till it stops working. And this is the Necessaire deodorant gel. It's 15 bucks. It is not an antiperspirant, but it doesn't make you smell like a hippie, like crystal deodorant. And I just, I don't sweat that bad. Now that we're moving into the summer, I may move back to an antiperspirant for the summer, but generally I'm not a super sweaty bitch. And if I, the sweatiness I do have, as long as it's not smelly, I don't care. I don't like to smell. Here is my very gross looking Oil of Olay, Olay Regenerous Night Recovery Cream. This has been my nighttime moisturizer for quite some time now, but this time I switched it up. I wanted to try something a little lighter for the summer because in the winter my skin gets super dry here, but I've always been oily. And since moving here and being on so many diuretics for uh, kidney disease, my skin has gotten very combination. I wanted to see if something lighter would be more sufficient for the summer. So I actually, instead of replacing it with this, I replaced it with the Neutrogena. I used the water gel for my daily moisturizer. I first thought I was gonna do the water cream that's meant for more dry skin, but then they have a night serum, which is kind of like thick. It's like almost like the cross between like a balm and a moisturizer and a serum. People say you can just use it as a moisturizer and that's what I've been doing and it's been working really, really well. So I think that might be my summertime moisturizer and I'll go back to this in the winter. Also, I'm pretty sure the night serum is like $10 less expensive than that. I could be wrong about that though. And then finally, I finally went through another hand, a body lotion, body cream. This is the Bath & Body Works Aromatherapy Chamomile and Bergamot. This is just one I happen to have left over from a while back and I'm just trying to use up all the body lotions and creams that I have. And so I've gone through this one. I'm not buying anything new because I have so many. I replaced this one with uh, the partly used bottle of Jergens, just standard cherry almond body lotion. And it's been working really well. I can't, that's not something I can use in the winter. I again, need something stronger in the winter. But for the spring and the summer, it's been working really well. And I forgot how much I love that classic scent. I'm not sure if I'll need a new face makeup because the ones I have are, the one that would be my summer shade, I'm like 99% out of. And the one I'm wearing now is my other one that's a little pale for me. So I may need to buy another thing of like skin tint this month. We shall see. My last year long category is food delivery, DoorDash and the like. We ordered it once this past month and it was when we had to do a late dialysis day. I don't remember what the circumstances were. Something happened, we wound up having to do dialysis into the evening and it was just easier to do delivery because Jess couldn't leave and neither of the kids drive yet. And I was on dialysis and when, I got a hair, fuck my life. When, when you're doing home hemo, th there is like a protocol for doing it on your own. My center doesn't do that. I am not trained to do that. So I don't know how to handle shit by my, oh, fuck. Blah. I can't be left alone while I'm on dialysis because if something happens, I am sitting there. <laughs> I can't do anything. So Jesse has to sit there with me and even going downstairs to cook is not something he's super comfortable with. Maybe he will be one day when the kids get a little bit more familiar with kind of the basics. And so he can go downstairs and make them get him if something is the problem. But generally speaking, he has to stay with me. And so it just made sense to order dinner. We actually didn't get anything for me though, because we have discovered from a different late night dialysis day, anything more than toast on dialysis and even too much toast, I get sick because your body slows, like it's pulling blood out of your body and you also need blood, like your blood stream to focus a certain way to help digest. 
I don't know exactly. My nephrologist explained it to me and it kind of went in one ear, not the other, except to say that there's a reason, like for some people, their dialy their, uh, on dialysis, their digestion slows way down. And so the more you eat, the more it's gonna sit there. And I already have a pretty compressed stomach because my kidneys are so big from PKD that they push on my stomach. So I already get heartburn from eating too much. And so I ate too much, almost puked. Didn't wanna do that again. So we did order a DoorDash, but it wasn't for me. <laughs> I feel like just the act of deleting the app off of my phone, so far now five months in, it has helped. Still a work in progress though. All right, before we talk about my month long challenge I'm gonna set for myself in June, let's quickly talk about my work budget, which shouldn't take very long because I didn't buy anything this month. I just, I just didn't. I, people have been making suggestions and I just hadn't gotten around to it, so there we go. I did publish both my rocket book video and my sprouted planner video. So both of those that have been purchased in previous months have now gone up on the channel. The only thing I haven't done yet is the paintbrush that I still haven't talked about yet, hopefully in a vlog soon, but this may be the paintbrush of shame. Just might be how it is. <laughs> uh, so it's a hundred bucks, nothing spent, so it's still a hundred bucks. This time I'm going to roll it over. I'm not gonna put it in like my full, like next month I'm not gonna give myself 200 bucks but I'm gonna just kind of set that to the side to kind of accumulate for the planner launch season in the fall when I buy my planners for next year. Somebody asked me in the last video, what do I do with the money? It just gets absorbed back into my work budget. I'm actually using YNAB as my, uh, as my work budget right now. I have QuickBooks to like collate all my tax info, but YNAB is how I'm budgeting for work. Um, it's a kind of an easier way for me to ease into it than doing our household budget. And I have a specific line item for the no buy $100. And next month, it's just, I'm just gonna refill it back to $100 and it's just gonna get absorbed back into the budget otherwise. But I am setting aside 100 bucks of it just in like a different category to save for the planner launch this fall. Again, if you're interested in how I'm using YNAB in this context, let me know in the comments or in my personal life as we work on it. Let me know in the comments below and I may absorb that into these videos for the meantime while I'm going down to just the one weekly video and the one weekend live or video. Now that we've talked about that, let's talk about what I am doing for the month of June because I found that other categories are starting to encroach now that I'm not buying in beauty and stationery. And, you know, Food delivery, but that's different because that's really food budget rather than like life budget because we, we eat one way or the other. But the point being is that my shopping has kind of started to, like my shopping urge has kind of started to land on other aspects of my life. Big one is home decor. And so for the month of June, I am going on a no buy for home decor as well as everything else in my year long no buy. Here are the rules I'm setting for myself. No appliances. And I'm not talking about like, like fuck it, my refrigerator breaks. Yeah, we have to replace that. Being a homeowner, fuck. Uh, I'm not saying it's going to, but like if it did, hypothetically, knock on wood, it's not going to. <laughs> like small appliances. So no small appliances, no decor, no kitchen shit, no organization shit. And I have some organizing I wanna do. Nothing like that. So stuff that could decorate the house or like, little things to enhance the house. None of that in the month of June. I do have some exceptions. My exceptions are outside stuff because we are gonna be doing some work in our backyard and so any outside furniture is not gonna be counted in this no buy. Picture hangers for the walls, like the little things you tap into the walls because I, at some point in my life, I'm gonna get some of these things up on the wall. I have the frames, I have everything else. I just would need to get the picture hangers so I'm not gonna count that because if I do for some reason manage to actually get my gallery walls hung, I'm gonna need those. And if something breaks that I have to replace, like if the can opener breaks, then I would need to replace that. Cause we use cans. I don't know if one of my chairs breaks here in the living room, we don't really need to replace that. We have other places to sit until the end of the month. But if like my whisk breaks that I cook with on an almost daily basis, then yeah, I'm gonna have to replace that. So those are my exceptions just for a month as well as everything else. I've got a lot of other things going on, so I don't anticipate that being a thing, but this basically means stay out of Home Goods, stay out of Ikea if I can, stay, stay out of all my fucking usual world market, my usual suspects. Just stay out of those, Cindy. Fucking check yourself before you wreck yourself. So if you wanna join me on doing a quick one month no buy, 
let me know in the comments below what you are not gonna buy this month. I want to also end this video with a few takeaways because I've been kind of thinking about how it's been going so far. Like I said, I'm gonna do a bit mid mid year roundup next month, but in the meantime, here are a few takeaways that I have for this past month. The first one being, I kind of talked about this, it's getting easier. Some of that might be the circumstances, like how busy my life has been, but I think some of it is just that my habits are starting to shift. I am no longer immediately thinking, ooh, I want that, I'm gonna buy it. It's like, ooh, that could be nice, but I'm not gonna buy that. Do I need it? The do I need it, is it necessary? That little moment there is something I preach, but I don't always practice, and so I think I'm getting better at it, which I think is one of the best pieces of this no buy. The second takeaway is that, to my own chagrin, I hate doing it. I have been planning at least general breakfasts and lunches. And I think that that is helping both with me going to get takeout and with Jesse ordering DoorDash. It makes it a little easier for both of us to at least see what's there and choose from that. So I hate it. I fucking hate meal planning in general. Did a video about that. But I can't deny that it's working. <laughs> Damn it. And then the third takeaway is actually just me already being a little nervous about August and time to buy new school supplies. Now, thankfully, RJ is a senior. So generally speaking, it's not like the elementary school supply fucking marathon where you get the list and you have all the specific things and you gotta buy 25 fucking crayon packs and you go to Target and you're basically like scooping everything off the shelves into your cart. When I had two elementary school students, it was like, it was like my fucking Thunderdome for purchasing, for purchasing school supplies because school supply season is always so much fun. But with a senior who has very specific tastes, he, I just need to send him into the store with like my Target card and say, go buy school supplies and only school supplies. And he can just do it himself. But I'm still knowing my past, my past, my past relationship with school supply season I still have a reasonable amount of dread for it coming and how it might impact my no buy. So it's something I'm just starting to think about. It's not really there yet. They're still kind of wearing the summertime stuff and I do have to go to the summertime section and get a few floats for when we have family here this summer so that we, we have our inflatable kayak, we don't have anything else. So, uh, but yeah, that one section of Target, like I can already feel the pulse underneath it, you know? Like the volcano, like Mount Vesuvius is not ready to blow yet, but like you know that the school supply eruption is coming. So I'm preparing for that. Anyway, those are all of my thoughts and my recap on my no-buy of May 2023, my no-buy year. I'd love to hear from you in the comments. I've talked about a lot of stuff and asked you to talk about, but like ultimately, if you're doing a no-buy, how's it going? What are your, what are your, what are your reporting? What's your reporting? What is your reporting? from the month of May. Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already, and until next time, my friends, peace.